ETEC Applied Science Unit 3 and this video is about uncertainty and errors. Uh, what does uncertainty mean? How do we express uncertainty? And the different types of error, uh, systematic errors and random errors and what we should do about them. So we'll start off with this. Um, look at this thermometer and you tell me what is the temperature according to this thermometer. Now looking at this, each scale division is two degrees, so you could say possibly it's 24 degrees centigrade. Well, we should give a little bit more information than that. It's actually 24 plus or minus one. And this plus or minus one is called the uncertainty in our reading. And what it means is that the true value, the actual temperature, the true value is somewhere between 23 and 25. We don't know what the true value is. The true value is going to be an irrational number. It might be 23.7649113 recurring, whatever. We don't know what the true value is, but we can say as long as we know that the thermometer has been properly calibrated, we can say that the true value is somewhere between 23 and 25. So our uncertainty is plus or minus one. And usually we can say it's half the smallest scale division. Here's another example. Look at this ammeter and tell me what the current is according to this ammeter okay and you should conclude that the current is 8 milliamps plus or minus 0.25 so it's closest to the 8 milliamp division and then plus or minus 0.25 because each scale division here is half a milliamp so our uncertainty our, what we call our absolute uncertainty is plus or minus 0.25 milliamps. And we can work out the percentage uncertainty. If we do 0.25 divided by eight and then times by 100, it is plus or minus 3%. That is the percentage uncertainty. When we design experiments, we should try to reduce uncertainty. And there's two main ways of doing that in our choice of method, in the way that we do the experiment and in our choice of equipment. For example, uh, with equipment, let's say I was measuring the time it takes for a ball to fall. So I'm dropping a ball and I want to know how long it takes to hit the ground. Now I could use a stopwatch or I could use uh, light gates with a data logger. Now with the light gates, there will be less uncertainty. Why? Because there'll be no human error. Because we're timing it electronically, there'll be less uncertainty with the light gates. So they would be better. Uh, another way of reducing uncertainty would be if I drop the ball from a bigger height. Now, why? Well, because it would take longer to hit the floor. Now, the absolute uncertainty would be the same, but because the time is bigger, then the percentage uncertainty would be the same. For example, if the uncertainty was 0.2 seconds, then uh, 0.2 out of one second is quite a lot. It's 20%, but 0.2 out of 10 seconds is a lot smaller. The percentage uncertainty is smaller. Let's talk about errors now. There are two types of error. There are systematic errors and there are random errors. And systematic errors, there's something wrong with the system. By the system, we're talking with the equipment or with the method. There's something wrong with the way that we're doing it, something wrong with the equipment. And you can tell the difference. Systematic errors will affect every reading. Every reading, there will be the same error with a systematic error. 
Random errors are unpredictable. These are caused by unpredictable changes in the experiment uh, and they will affect the precision. It's like if we do the same thing again and again, we're not going to get exactly the same reading again and again. Uh, and this is because of random errors. They will affect how close together the readings are, which is called the precision of the readings. What we can do is we can minimize the effect of random errors. And we do that by taking repeat readings. And this is why we do the experiment twice or three times and then take an average. And what we're doing is we are minimizing the effect of random errors. For example, if I do it three times and I get eight, eight and 10, and then take an average, well, the average will be closer to eight than it will be to 10. Um, systematic errors, uh, here are a couple of examples. The first one is very important. Make sure you know this one. It's called a zero error. Look at the ammeter. Now, it, it hasn't been calibrated properly. It should be reading zero and it isn't. And this error is going to affect every reading. So it's an example of a systematic error. Uh, another example is imagine that this tape measure is old and it has stretched a bit. And because it's stretched a bit, if we use it to measure the, the length of things, uh, then the answer that we get will be too small, okay? Because the tape measure has stretched. So that's another example of a, a systematic error. Here are two words which you definitely need to know the meaning of, uh, repeatability and reproducibility. If an, an experiment is repeatable, now the, the key is repeatable is the same person. If the same person carries out the experiment under the same conditions with the same equipment and gets very similar results, then it is repeatable. So the same person does the experiment again, gets the same results, it's repeatable. Reproducible means if somebody else carries out the experiment uh, in a different place with different equipment and they get very similar results, then we say that your experiment is reproducible. If scientists are doing science and they're testing a hypothesis, they are doing important science that other people can learn from, it's very important that their experiments are reproducible. There's no point you doing an experiment to prove something, but anybody else does the experiment and it doesn't show the same conclusion. So our experiments should also be reproducible. Here's a, a summary of what I've been talking about in this video. When you're writing a method for an experiment, you should justify your choices. Uh, and you should choose equipment and methods that will minimize uncertainty. For example, you choose equipment with appropriate scale divisions. Okay. Uh, you should always take repeat readings to minimize the effect of random errors and, and say that in your plan. I will do the experiment at, at each temperature three times and take an average. Uh, this will minimize the effect of random errors. And any measuring devices that you use should be properly calibrated. For example, to check for zero error so that there isn't that systematic error there.